So today we're looking at the query formula in Google Sheets. So the query formula is a very flexible, powerful formula that allows you to take a table of data in your Google Sheet and transform it, filter it, etc., and do many things with it. And it's using what Google calls their query language. And so if you look at their example here, there's the data, and then you basically write out this query and you're basically asking Google to return certain things from the data that you're querying. Then finally, there's this thing just called headers, and this just tells Google if there is a header row in the data that you have in the range. So we're doing B to E, and so we're actually including this title, so we will use one. So let's just do a very basic. First of all, I just wanna show you that you actually don't need to add a query. You can simply put in the data and it'll return it. That isn't super useful, so let's go ahead and start with our first query. And so the first thing you want to do is select, and then you can determine which columns you want to return. If you want to return all, you can just use this asterisk, which is a wildcard, and that will return them all. Or you can select certain ones from the data set. And one thing to keep in mind is, for example, I have this empty A column, and so I want to make sure I'm selecting the same letter as the letter that I want to return. So if I say select C, it's going to select C, if I select D, it's going to return D and so forth. Now I can select multiple columns and you just separate each column you want to return with a comma. So we can return in any order we like. So C, E, B, D, which is very useful to be able to rearrange data sets in that order. Now, currently it's all returning things in the exact same order that we have. So let's look at some different things we can add here. So first off, let's look at our where. So where we're going to specify a condition that we want to filter the data. So we could do where E is greater than, let's say 10 million. If I got enough commas here, so that's a million, let's do 10 million. So if we do this and scroll down, we can see we stop here. Let's actually do an order by as well. So order by is how we sort it. So we can sort it ascending or descending. And so first off, we need to select a column. So we're going to select by E and we can do ascending. And so you can see now that we're actually going up to China. Or we can do descending. And now we're in a descending order. We could add another zero here to make it 100 million. And then again, we can do ascending or descending. Now, another thing we could do instead of this where clause, we could do order by E ascending, and then we could do this thing called limit and limit to 10 results. And so this is going to start with the smallest which is Pitcairn Islands, and show the next 10 results. So we could go to 20, now we can see 20 results. If we change this to descending, now we see the 20 largest countries. Now let's go in a slightly different direction and look at calculations that we can do. So for example, we can use min on E, and that is going to show the smallest population, which as we just saw a minute ago was 40. So we can select min, we can select max, and we can select sum. And so now you can see we have 40, 1.4 billion, and then the total sum, which we have this sum right here. So you can see that, quickly verify that we have the same number. Now one thing I've noticed is that Google has auto-populated these titles for these columns. So next we're gonna show you really quickly how we can add labels. So labels, you have to specify the same thing you have on here. So for example, I'm label min E, and then I put blank here, but I can do minimum or uh, smallest pop. You can add a thing there and I'm let me just go ahead and add the rest of these. Max E, 
largest pop. Notice I'm using single quotes because this whole query is wrapped in double quotes. So we'll get into more of that in a little bit, but just recognize that for the moment. We are using single quotes in here. You try to use double quotes, you're gonna run into errors. Total pop. All right, so now we use this labels. And so we labeled the min E column, smallest pop, the max, largest pop, and the sum, total pop. All right, so now that we've given you a quick overview of query, let's dive into some more use cases and give you a little better idea of how to use this in your own projects, as well as explain some of these things in a little bit more detail. So first off, let's go into some grouping and summing here. We've already shown you the basics of this. Let's go into a little bit more. So one thing you've probably noticed is that we have both countries and continents on here, along with the population. So, so far we've been showing you the country and the population, but what if we want to see the population by continent? So query actually allows you to do this very simply. So we can select D, which is our continent, and then E, let me put my select here. But if I just do this, it shows all of them. So I actually want to group by Asia and North America and so forth. So what I can do is I can put sum because I want to add up E with D and I can do group by D. So what you can see now is we have only our continents and the populations. Now, one thing to notice, we have this blank row here. And so we're just gonna add a simple condition here where D is not null. And then you can see it removes that blank row. So this one's an easy one to do. Otherwise, Google will automatically add because we don't have the end row specified. So it's grabbing the entire tab that some, a simple condition like this may be appropriate. Another thing you could do here is you could say where D equals to Africa. You see now only returns Africa. Or you could say where not D equals Africa. So you can use a positive or a negative. Now one thing here, you notice if I did where D or not D equals Africa, we have this blank row again. So maybe we want to add another condition. And so you just simply append another condition with and D is not null. And see now that we remove that and we also have where D is not Africa. Or we can remove Asia and see it just swapped out Asia for Africa. All right, so now that we've done that, let's look at another one. So you notice we have continents and countries. So one thing we could look at is we could put countries going down here and maybe continents across the top. And this is called a pivot. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this and show a pivot. So we want countries going down. So we're gonna select that as a column. We want the population. So we're gonna select some C. Let's go ahead and just add this where C is not null. And then what we need to do is group by C and then pivot D. And now notice D is not in our selection, but we're gonna pivot by it. Now we're gonna add our title. And then what you see here now is C, our column is going down. And then our sum E is actually showing up in our pivot. So our pivot D, so we have Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Oceania, and South America. And then we can see the numbers falling for each one. So Afghanistan is in Asia, Albania, Europe, America, Samoa is in Oceania. So that is a quick and easy way to be able to pivot data when you want to be able to see it across two different metrics at the same time. All right, let's go to our next one. We're going to reference data outside of the query. So this is called escaping the query. And so what we have here is you notice we have these single quotes. And so let's go ahead and build this from the beginning. So let's go ahead and just put North America. And so this is how you would probably normally write it on a basic level, put Asia. Now, if you want to reference something outside of this query string, so for example, we have the selector here, and perhaps we want to be able to select and then see the results in our query. And so you just saw it, but I'll go ahead and build this again. So we have our string, but instead of putting Asian here, I want to reference that cell. So what I'm gonna do, because we have these double quotes and this marks the beginning and the end, 
We're actually gonna use these double quotes to escape out of here. And inside this, I'm gonna use these ampersands and then select that cell. And so this is the way that you escape out of a query to reference a cell elsewhere. And it could be on this tab or it could be on a different one. So now if I select a different continent on here, you can see it automatically updates what countries are showing up. And so it's just a simple escaping that allows us to do that. And so that's gonna take us to our next one, which is one that a lot of people struggle with, and it's dates. So dates can be a little confusing, but we're gonna walk you through it. By the end, you're gonna be master. So let's go ahead and add date here. So we got these are in 2021, so last year. So let's go ahead and just do 6121. And let's go into this formula and build it out. So this is the most confusing part of the query with dealing with dates. So this is the format that Google needs the date in is the year, four digit year, the month, and then the day. And so if we do like what we did before, where we just simply exited, let's do this. We simply exited the query and did this direct reference, this doesn't work. So the first thing to keep in mind is you have to put this date before you specify a date. That's just to alert Google that you're actually specifying a date and not a number. So if we just reference this cell, however, we're still getting an error. So if we go like this, we see this error. It says invalid date literal, and it shows this number. Instead, it should be a form year, year, month, month, date, date. And so you can see that right here. And so this text formula is transforming our date. We look at this, it's transforming our date into a specific format, which is this four digit year and then month and then date. And so if we take this formula, instead of just referencing the cell, we're gonna wrap it in this text. And so this converts G2, you can see this little pop up here into this 2021, six and one. So if we select this, now we can see we're having the correct date. If we change this to five, you can see now it starts at five. If we go to four and so forth. So you can see now it's working correctly. And what happens if we want to add a end date as well? Let's say we want to see just April. And um, we can change this to a little more friendly there. So let's say we want to see this one. So right now we're going past into May. So all we have to do now, once you have one written out, it's actually very easy to duplicate this. So I'm, I'm gonna copy this. And then I'm going to add a space in here, paste. And I'm just gonna modify this for what I need. So first of all, I need to do and. Every time you add another condition, you just wanna put an and in between. So I'm doing select all columns where B is greater than or equals to date. And then that's my start date. And then where B is less than or equal to, and keep in mind, this can be less than or greater than equals to, or just greater than, depending upon what you need. And same thing on this end, it can be just less than or it can be less than and equals to. And so here, all I need to do then is change it to H. And so now I have where B is greater than or equals to what's in G2, and where B is less than or equal to what's in H. So if I hit enter, if I scroll down, you see now it ends at 429. And let's go to halfway through the month. See now it goes to 15. And so that's all it takes to do dates in a query. And so if you need to go back for this for reference, this is the key right here is you make, have to make sure that you have the date in the right format. And so just to show you, we can do this here, get rid of this. And I actually can do 2021, 0401. And we have the same result. So you can actually hard code this as well, but most people don't wanna do that because it's much more flexible to be able to reference an external cell. But if you want to do it manually, you can do it just like this and that works as well. All right, that is it for dates and that will wrap up our video for today. Thank you very much and hope to see you again soon.